If you look on our website, you can see the predictions that I made about when Trump would secure the nomination. If you watch episodes months, I'm five, six, seven months old, I predicted that Trump was going to be the nominee. When every talking head on Fox and CNN and anywhere was saying Trump will never make it, I sat in this chair and I said to you, Donald Trump is going to be the Republican nominee. Now, this is not a nanny nanny boohoo. Why is that important? It's important because I understood something as a, as a lifelong political, cultural, social activist and warrior and leader. I understood something that those poor misguided fools in Washington DC and New York City could never grasp. Rage, rage, fury, blind rage with some people. The, the disgust, the levels of, the, of passionate distrust and the, the, the levels of a sense of we've been betrayed, we've been lied to. And there's nothing that you can say that is going to change our mind. We don't even want to hear the timber of your voice. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. I got it. Others got it. Not people on, you know, on the big screen and in our, in our talking head worlds, but I got it. Because I was in jail in 92 in Houston. We were in the freedom cage in 96 or 2000 up in Boston. All right, I've been through these battles at political conventions, at the Democrat convention, at the Republican convention. I've been at the forefront of movements to say we will not vote for Dole. Using my voice on radio, we will not support McCain. So I understand. But here's the little picture in the big picture that I was talking about before. Little picture was my vote. I'm not going to support, I'm not going to vote for Bob Dole. Because Dole said, I'm not bound to follow the Republican Party platform. I'll do what I want. My vote. I live in New York State at the time. I know that if I vote for Dole or don't vote for Dole, it's irrelevant in the grand scheme of things because New York is going to go overwhelmingly Democrat. All right? So Clinton carried New York. That was my little thing. But in the big picture, I was using my voice then, as I have used it in many election cycles, to say that the Republican Party establishment is corrupt. I ran in 1998 for the U.S. House of Representatives and it was four Republican governors who raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to smash me, to crush me politically, all right? Governor of New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and California. So they came at me with money. I ran in 2006 for the state Senate in Florida, all right? And again, it was the Republican Party establishment that raised a small fortune, probably a quarter million dollars for a state race, a local, a local race. And they pummeled me. These are evil doers. These are corrupt, often godless men. Okay. I mean, they might have a Christian baptism, but they don't care about the fear of God and about dead babies and innocent blood. They just don't care. So I have used my voice at different times to say this machine, the Republican establishment in Washington, D.C., and in many of our state governments is corrupt, through and through corrupt. And what we need is to break the, 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 the kneecaps of the Republican establishment. I'm saying that euphemistically. Um, because they are the biggest impediment to to real reform. I mean, in other words, who's, who's the bigger threat? Judas or Pilate? Well, Jesus said Judas had the bigger sin. It takes a traitor from inside to turn you over. That's why Benedict Arnold is held in such contempt. So I kept saying the Republican establishment is the problem. All right, little picture, my vote. Big picture, politically, Republican Party, our enemy. Republican Party establishment, our enemy. And along comes Trump. 
Along comes Trump and oh my goodness, what is he doing? He is smashing our enemy, the Republican Party establishment. Don't you see it?